Welcome to the Jordan and Kristen Rickard Show. The world is falling apart, but you don't have to. Join Jordan and Kristen as they discuss the challenges that face us in our decaying world every day. God has a plan for you to have victory and to be a light in the darkness. As the Bible says, those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Now, here's Jordan and Kristen. All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Jordan and Kristen Pray For You. We've got 25 prayer requests. We're going to get to all of them today. Actually, a quick apology. I understand that some of them got cut off yesterday. So the ones that got cut off, we're going to get to. And of course, Kristen's gotten that standing prayer for us as well. I just want to first relate a quick story to you that I think might be helpful. Every now and then I have to go into New Brunswick to go to court and because I'm a lawyer. And there's this parking deck that you have to park in. And on the outside of the parking deck, there's this young person who's always there begging for money. Always there. He's been there for years. Is you know, perfectly able-bodied person. And he goes to that parking deck and begs for money. And he goes up the street and begs for money there. He's got a whole circuit. And so the first few times I saw him, I would give him money and, and just talk to him for a moment. But after a while, you know, it, it just felt like, why do I have to keep giving this person money? I'm I'm constantly working. This guy doesn't seem like he has anything wrong with him. He can get a job like me. You know, and I, I said to God, not really expecting an answer. I said, you know, how many more times? I know my job is to be charitable and everything, but how many more times do I have to give this guy money? And listen, I'm not one of these people that goes around saying that I hear audible voices from God. I've never had like one of these burning bush experiences where God just, you know, appears to me or anything like that. I don't see visions of angels. And so I, I, you know, that's, that's not me, but I will tell you as God is my judge. When I said, when I said kind of to myself, I said, God, how many more times do I have to give this guy money? I felt right in my spirit, the response, how many more times are you going to ask me for forgiveness? And it occurred to me there two things. First of all, that God calls on us to be charitable. He doesn't say be charitable up to a certain point. He says be charitable. And he says, whatsoever you do unto the least of these, so have you done unto me. So God sees what we're doing. But secondly, it was very strange to me how being charitable in that way relates to forgiveness. Because that's really the ultimate form of charity, isn't it? And it's actually the least expensive kind is forgiveness. I mentioned last night that the greatest impediment I've ever seen in people's lives to receiving blessings is lack of forgiveness. And sometimes people don't even know that they lack forgiveness in their lives. And so I always tell them, you should pray for God to reveal to you if there's any unforgiveness in your heart that you need to address and repent of. Forgiveness is such an important topic in the Bible. In fact, when when Jesus returns from the grave and he goes and meets his disciples in John, either chapter 20 or 21, I forget which, he tells them, whosoever you forgive on earth will be forgiven in heaven and whosoever you don't forgive will not be forgiven. OK, so it's it's basically you're passing judgment. It's the difference of life and death. And so I, I simply say that not to be judgmental of anyone myself, but simply to impress upon you the importance of forgiveness because all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us have sinned. And Jesus says, you know, if you want to be forgiven yourself, you have to forgive others, which is something we all want. More than that, just on a personal level, it's been my experience that I don't want to give anybody who I don't like or who's done me wrong space in my life. If someone's hurt me in some way, the worst thing I can do is allow that person also to live in my mind and live in my heart and take up that space because then they're just hurting me more. And I know that sometimes people like to hold on to anger because it makes them feel strong, but you're not actually hurting that person. You're not really accomplishing anything. You're just hurting yourself. So my message tonight, and it's a brief one because I try to keep them quick, but my message tonight is if you have unforgiveness in your life, get rid of it because first of all, it's not helping you. And secondly, it's absolutely hurting you. And more than that, more than that, be grateful that God forgives us. When we're saying to ourselves, how much more do we have to help this person? Why should we have to forgive this person? Just think about all the things that we've had to ask God to forgive us for. I know my list is pretty long, and I know I don't just speak for myself when I say that. So that's my message for you tonight. 
Kristen, how are we doing tonight? Doing great. Yes. Thank God for his forgiveness. His mercies are new every morning. And so thank you, Lord, that you have forgiven us and we have that uh, in you, that forgiveness that we can forgive others also and live in freedom. Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. God, we come before you tonight. I, I, the word on my heart tonight is joy. Lord, it's, it's something that I feel as Christians, you, you really, you, the joy of the Lord is our strength. It's something that we should be defined with as Christians. It should be part of our definition. It should be part of our job description as Christians. But so often the world and its troubles bogs us down and, and people may not see the joy in our hearts because joy is different than happiness. Happiness is just a momentary thing based on, based on circumstances at the moment or based on a, a certain emotion. Joy goes deeper and the joy of the Lord, I pray that the joy of the Lord is our strength, Lord. I pray that we, we latch on to your joy, God. Your joy that no matter what, consider it pure joy, my brothers, when you go through trials. That, that is so crazy, but it's so, it's so you, Lord. It's so you to put that in the Bible, that we can know that we can have joy. Even in times like this, when our routines are messed up, when our loved ones are in, in health crisis or uh, the economy or anything that's going on around us, God, we can have your joy. And joy is accompanied by, with hope and peace. God, the hope that's an anchor to the soul, the peace, be led forth in joy and peace, Lord. You say that your word will go forth to us, Lord. You will, it will accomplish what it's set out to do, God. Just like the snow that comes from heaven, falls on the earth to harvest the, the grain, and it does what its, what its purpose was, Lord, so, that, so is the same way in our lives with, with your joy, Lord. Your purpose, your word will go forth for what it's meant to accomplish. And the purpose in our lives of your joy will reign true. God, I pray that we would find your joy, God. Lord, that your joy would be deep in our hearts. That we would nest in the gale. That no matter what's going on around us, Lord, we would live in your joy. We would just have this overwhelming sense of joy and the shadow of your wing and singing with joy, Lord. Lord, we know it's possible. It seems, it seems impossible, but we know it's possible because you tell us so. And we know it goes deeper than our momentary circumstances, Lord. When Paul said he learned to be content in all things, Lord, help us to, to latch on to that. And I don't see that just as content, just being okay. I see that as being filled with your joy overflowing with your joy. God, you want us to overflow with your joy. So I pray for your people tonight. I pray that we would return to the joy of the Lord as our strength, God. May we have that joy deep within us, God. When we feel like we're hitting a wall, Lord, in our world today, what's going on in our personal lives, sometimes we feel like we're hitting a wall. The enemy wants to put a mirage in front of us and make it look like there's no end in sight, to make it look like there's no hope, to make it look like there's no way out. But God, in the walls of Jericho came down with your praises. So we, with that same joy of the Lord, we praise you and we go around the walls, God, till they come down. We circle around your promises, God, till the walls fall down, till the obstacles fall down, till we feel the joy. We praise when we don't even, when we don't feel like praising. We pray when we don't feel like praying until what flows out of us is your spirit, God. The flesh can't take over. It's the spirit, God. Let the spirit of the joy of the Lord be our strength. Lord, I just pray for your people to just start, just start laughing with excitement and joy because they can't even explain it, but they have such joy with hope in their hearts, God, that they can't explain Lord, I pray that each person listening to this would feel your joy, God, would feel your arms wrap around them, God, would feel you pick them up and swing them around, God, in your joy, God. Thank you that you're a, a God that gives joy. You're giving us joy freely, Lord. It's, it's ours to take. It's ours. It's in your hands, Lord. Help us to take hold of your joy, God, and let it be our strength, God. You are a rock in our fortress. 
our ever-present help in time of trouble, God. You are a deliverer, God. God, you never deliver halfway. You never do anything halfway. You never give us halfway joy or halfway hope. You fill us to the brim, overflowing, God. And that's what's so cool about you, Lord. We, we, when people say, I'm okay, it's not ever okay in you, Lord. It's more than okay. It's great. It's, it's, it's beyond what we could ask or imagine, Lord. You are beyond what we could ask or imagine, God. Help us, Lord. When flesh and the mind want to take over, kick, kick in, Lord. Kick in your joy, Lord. Lord, just right now, in the name of Jesus, for every person and every need, God, and when, even when they feel like the circumstances are, are not changing, even when they feel like, like they've endured more than they could bear, God, you hold them up, Lord. I pray for your comfort and you hold them up. And I pray for them right now to say, I don't know why, but God is giving me joy. God is giving me hope. I know this is going to change in his time. And I know that I can endure it because God has given me strength and his joy is my strength, God. So just surround your people with your joy, God. Let there be singing and joy and laughter and life, God, life abundantly. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, amen, Kristen. Thanks so much for that. It's very beautiful. Thanks. Thanks. All right, so we've got a bunch of prayers, and Kristen, I'm going to read them off, and then maybe you could, I'll say a prayer, and you could pray for them also, because it's just Absolutely. so many tonight. Yes. Rather than do these one at a time. Uh, so Myrna asks us to pray for her and her children, Cameron, Kalon, and baby Sarah, and her husband, and for her entire family in the world and her country, Belize. Mary asks that we pray that all her family be saved. And by the way, anybody who's watching this, we really encourage you to pray for these people also. And even if you can't memorize the names, that's fine. Just, you know, God knows who we're talking about, okay? That's right. Zachary Carr says he needs a miracle. Uh, Estefani prays for her health. Jason Clavio says, please pray for the whole world to stop the coronavirus in our whole land. Praise God Almighty. Amen. Evelyn uh, prays for cancellation of debts. Nellie sent us a picture. She says, hi, beautiful couple. I'm so grateful. This is my nephew's wife in the hospital for, for four months now with a coma. Her name is Clemmy. We pray that uh, we ask that we keep her in her prayers. We'll pray for all these people at the end. Lori Lee wishes us good health and asks that we, pr we pray for family guidance and protection, especially among her siblings, and that her husband finds a job. Sergei Dmitriov sent us a picture of some poor children in Bulgaria he works with who, by virtue of being poor, unfortunately, are kind of social outcasts, and he tells us that they need food and clothing. Uh, Asanadi asks for prayers for himself and his family and his finances. We got a request from somebody whose name is Blessing O. James. It says, I need God to save me from the power of sin. I want to repent and live a new life. Well, certainly the blood of Jesus is capable of doing that. We'll pray for all these people in a moment. Teresita says, please include my daughter, April, who's undergone chemotherapy for her cancer. May our God touch her and heal her and be cancer free. I like that because I like that she says cancer free because a lot of times people will be too satisfied with getting a partial healing or like 98% healed. So we're going to believe that she's totally healed of cancer, not just, not just in remission, not just a reduction, but totally cancer free. Rada asks that we please pray for our, pray for his country, that peace will prevail wherever that is. We'll pray for peace to prevail throughout the entire world. Augustine asks that we pray for healing. Paula asks that we pray for her brother, Mark Bood, who had open heart surgery about a month ago and is lying helplessly in a hospital in New York. I pray that God be with him. I, I pray that not only is that person healed, Mark, but also that everybody around him is healed because those hospitals are starting to fill up with these coronavirus patients. But we pray that we pray that the healing just radiates through him and into, into everyone else around him. Ava asked us to pray for her family, that they never leave Jesus Christ and my work. Pray for both of those things. Sunil prays for total restoration. We serve a God of restoration, praise God. Grace Geji says, I want God to help me understand his words. Let me be prayerful. I want to give him, I want him to give me understanding, knowledge, and wisdom. Well, ours is not a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So believe me, if you ask for that, God's going to, God's going to give it to you. Good for you. Mary Jones asked us that we pray for a job, all of her debts paid off, and her daughter getting a scholarship, good, and protection for her family. We'll certainly pray for that. Maria Martinez says, please pray for all sick people over the whole world. I like, I like big, bold prayers like this. 
Kristen. I love when people yeah. just ask us, first of all, she's not even praying for herself here. Uh, she's she's asking for prayers for others. And she she believes in a God who's big enough to answer huge prayers for every sick person in the world. That's right. That's right. She also asks us to pray for her country, Honduras, and her family. She says, thank you. God bless you. By the way, I love these prayer requests that come to us that say, God bless us, because we really do. We really are blessed by these things. And we, we thank you all for praying for us and keeping us in your prayers. That really yes. means a lot. Yes. Uh, Ikea Guwu, I hope I pronounced that name correctly, asks for divine healing and financial breakthrough in Jesus' name. Amen. Moses Joshua asks for a divine healing. Emerald Ruby says, please pray for my son who has been jobless to get a job. Anita Singh asks that we pray that she gets a government job soon. And Sylvia asks for divine healing and spiritual growth. We're going to pray for all these people. I want to say a special prayer to lead off. And then, Kristen, you could take over, all right? Sure. For the, for the people who prayed for restoration, but also the people who prayed that God delivers them from sin. There were a lot of exchanges that occurred on the cross. The predominant one is Jesus became a curse so that we could be a blessing. He bore our sins. He took on the sins of the world. There's the scene on the cross where Jesus says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Yeah. Is because It's not because God the Father didn't care. It's because all of our sins, my sins, Kristen's sins, your sins, were put onto Jesus at that moment to be killed, to be crucified. And I'll tell you something else. Even if you were the only person who had ever sinned, he still would have made that sacrifice for you. That's right. So our God is a God who not only can deliver you from sin, he's already won the battle over sin. And he did it specifically so that he could be close to you. He said, this is the thing that stands between you and me. I am a righteous God. There can't be sin between us. So I'm going to send my only son to be a sacrifice, to die for that sin, to eliminate it so that there's going to be nothing in between the two of us. And you and I can come into perfect relationship with each other. That's right. So in Jesus' name, I pray for all of these people I just mentioned. And I ask everybody else does the same. We pray for all these people we just mentioned. And I say a special prayer for the people who are living in sin. We declare them to be free of those sins. Jesus came to, to free the slaves. Yes. And we don't just mean physical slaves. I get that. But people who are slaves to sin, Jesus has won that battle for you. You are free. The enemy has no place in your life. That's the right. enemy is, is absolutely defeated. And we declared you completely free, yes. cleansed with the blood of Christ, and washed clean as snow. That's right. One of the things that, Kristen, that attracted me to Christianity many years ago is, I forget which one of Paul's letters it is. But he says, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old right. is gone, the new has come. And that means it's not just like you used to be a sinner. It's some other person. That that thing that you remember, that was a different person. That person has died. When you accept Christ, you are a new person. Yeah. So you're not, you're not, I am not sitting here as somebody who has sinned and has to feel guilty about things I did 10 years ago. That was someone else who did that. That person died on the cross. And I'm a new creation. Every morning I wake up. Paul said, I die daily. Every morning I wake up, I'm a new person. Mm -hmm. So this is the freedom that God promises you. And it's not just so that you go to heaven instead of hell. It's so that you can come into the fullness of God's blessings in this life. And so that those blessings can flow through you and into other people. So in Jesus' name, we decree it and declare all of these people are free from the curse of sin. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Krista, could you just say a, a brief prayer over the rest of these, these people, please? Yes, Lord. I pray for everyone, every person who, like I talked about tonight, it feels like in that life that they're hitting that wall, that the <laughs> enemy has kind of put a mirage in front of them that feels like there's no way out, where they feel like their life is in slow motion, or maybe they've gotten some really bad news, Lord, about, about health or, 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 or finances. Or, it's, it's all, Lord, you care. There's one thing I know about you, Lord. You care about all the needs, the big needs, the seemingly small needs. You care about it all the same. 
And just like you're no respecter of persons, you're mm. also no respecter of needs, God. You don't look at one need and say, oh, that's not great enough for me to do a miracle or, oh, that's too big for me to do a miracle. God, it's all in your eyes, something that you can and will do. So I pray for each person. I pray for our friend, Clemmy, who's um, our new friend, Clemmy, who's in coma right now, Lord, in Jesus name, I pray that she will live and not die. And I pray that, that, that you would just cause everything in her body, Lord, to start functioning properly, Lord. I pray for her eyes to open. I pray for everything to start functioning as it should be, Lord. We surround, we surround that, that hospital and the, those doctors. And for every person who asks for health and healing, we surround those doctors. Lord, you, the great physician, may you be their hands, God. May you guide their hands, God. May you create healing, God. May you create miracles. May you just create miracles. And for this virus and, and people who are sick, Lord, we just proclaim your blanket of healing, God. We proclaim your blanket of healing over the finances that were, that were expressed, over the, over the family relationships and the restoration, God, over every need, God, for every person, God. You care. May you meet them at your, their need, God. I, Lord, we know that you intercede for us, God. We stand in the gap for these people, God. But God, we can't do anything on our, in and of ourselves. God, we're, just at, we're asking you, you the miracle worker, God, we're bringing these needs as a messenger and laying them at your feet and saying, God, you care about these needs. Do your work, God, as only you can do. We can't do anything, but you can do everything. In the natural, it seems impossible. In the natural, it is impossible. But my God is a miracle working God. For Zachary, who asked us several times for a miracle, God, I pray that you are not only give him miracles, but you are his miracle, God. Mm. That you show him that you show him, God, that you show him just how mighty you are, God, in the big things and the little things, God. Show him in the little things. The little things are just as important as the big things. The little miracles are just as important, God. Lord, thank you that you are close and that you want, you want for us to ask you to do these things. You say you have not because you ask not. And you say in um, Mark about how if nothing is impossible for the person who believes, and we believe for these people, Lord. We believe for their needs, God. And I'm asking you, I'm coming before you, God, and asking for each person that expressed a need, asking to meet those needs and go beyond the need that they think they need. Yep. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Dynamite job, Kristen. Praise God. Thank you. All right. All right, Kristen. Well, you want to close us out with the call to salvation? Yes. For, for uh, our friends here who said that they want um, to repent and maybe they want to um, not maybe, I'm hoping they want to accept Jesus as their savior and those who don't know Jesus yet or those who want to recommit their life, you can follow after me in this prayer. Dear Jesus, I ask you to forgive my sins. I admit I have sinned. I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord. I make you my savior. I will follow you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. And if you prayed that prayer the first time or the first time in a long time, let us know. Send us a comment or send us an inbox message. We want to hear from you and get you started in your walk with Christ. Also, when these prayers get answered, we want to hear about that too. We yes. like hearing good news. Yes, please. And don't be afraid to send them in. And we try to, we actually do get to everyone that sends us a prayer request. So please keep sending us in. Sending them in, please help us out a little bit and share our Facebook page, share the videos. Again, we don't make any money doing this. We don't ask for money. We're doing this to save souls. And this is how you can help us in what is effectively missions work by, you know, spreading the gospel. And, you know, God will give you credit for that, too. I'm sure. I'm sure. You know, thank God that we don't, you know, we're not asked to do what people were asked to do centuries ago and, and go into these jungles. <laughs> there are still people that do that. Uh, we That's get right. to do our missions work from the comfort of our own respective homes. Uh, so if, it, if you could just Take a moment and share these things. It would help us out and it helps out the ministry too. All right, guys. Well, listen, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow night. In the meantime, be blessed and be a blessing. Have a great night. Thank you for joining us. Don't forget to follow Jordan and Kristen Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and iTunes. And remember to tune in next week and every week on Tuesdays at 845 on WMCA The Mission, AM 570 and FM 102.3. Hey,